tell we are doing things a bit differently right now as you have you are just from listening from children of the sick community and right now i am joined by two beautiful ladies who are going to be educating us on what all this is about you know we're all going to be learning here so i am having with me govin and then we also have muheshimiwa sonia welcome to the program if we may just begin by you telling us a bit about the um, children of the sick community. Uh, thank you, Vivian, for inviting us. Mm -hmm. um, my uh, sister here, Gwivin Kaur, she's a scholar in Sikh studies. Mm. Um, the children that you see here, they're from the Sikh community. And they are from uh, the, the Gurmat Parshala uh, that is under the East African Ramgadia board and the temple of Pangani, Sikh temple Pangani. Mm. Uh, so this is basically like the uh, Sunday school, but uh, we call it uh, Gurmat Patshala. It is a word in Punjabi. It is not a Hindi word because we are not Hindus, we are Sikhs. Mm -hmm. So we call it the Gurmat Patshala, okay. uh, the, 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 Sunday, the Saturday school, the spiritual Saturday school. Mm -hmm. um, these are just uh, just a few of the children who are come, who have come with us today. I would have uh, had if I would have had the um, permission. I would have brought you around 40 more. Mm -hmm. But the numbers are growing. We're happy because the children are coming every week to learn about uh, the culture, how to speak Punjabi, which is uh, the language, how to write Punjabi, how to converse, and how to conduct themselves within the walls of the temple. Mm -hmm. So that's what our uh, Gurmat Patshala school is all about. All right, that performance that they've just performed for us, what, what is it about? So this recital is our national anthem. Okay. It's called Dehe uh, Shiva Bar Mohe Hai. It is our Sikh national anthem, which is uh, recited around the world. Um, at this present point in time, we are celebrating as Sikhs our Sakhi, um, our s very special occasion, it's ce celebrated around the world and mm -hmm. it is the 325th year mm -hmm. that we are celebrating uh, around the world. It's usually a three day affair. Uh, these children have just come from the opening of the prayers at the temple in Pangani Sikh temple. Um, and uh, these temp prayers will go on till Sunday, um, Saturday. Sat Saturday afternoon actually, mm. because we have flag hoisting also um, at, uh, at 11 o'clock. We have a special flag which is in the vicinity of our temple. And then lunch is served as some people know, um, some people have known about the very famous temple on Makindu, uh, on the way to Makindu called um, uh -huh. um, Makindu Sahib Gurdwara or mm -hmm. temple, uh, where people know that every time you stop there, you have lunch. So similarly, all our temples around, our, all around the world have free lunch. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Um, and this special occasion is going to be celebrated till Sunday. Okay. Yeah. What is the difference between the Sikh and the Sin? So Sikh is the religion, Sikhism or Sikhi is the religion altogether, mm -hmm. whereas Singh is the word used to address the male species and to address the female species, its core. Mm. So for instance, if I was a male, I'd be Gurveen Singh, mm. but because I'm a female, it's Gurveen core. Okay. Whereas Sikhism is the whole religion, the way you have like Islam, Christianity, Jainism, Buddhism, you have Sikhism as well. Okay. So that's the religion altogether. Oh, no, I get it. Um, you know, when we're talking of national anthems, you mentioned that what they were just from reciting the national anthem. When we sing the Kenyan national anthem, it is law that you have to stand up. When the national anthem is being sung, we have to stand up. But we're seeing them seated on the ground for the national anthem. Is there, is there any explanation for that? Well, one of the explanations you have here is that the setup that you have in the studio here is for sitting down. Okay. But ideally, uh, we also do it uh, standing in certain in certain circumstances, mm. most of the time, mm -hmm. the singing or reciting of hymns in our temples is done sat down. Mm -hmm. So when they sing the national anthem, it could be that everybody's standing uh, in the beginning and then they sit down. Mm. But mostly we do all our reciting while we're sat down. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So most of the recitals are done while seated. we're sitting down. Yes. Yeah. So in the temple, normally we all sit all together. Of you are just seated. We sit down cross-legged. Ladies sit on, sit on the left hand side, mm -hmm. and gents sit on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I want us to get into the Vaisakhi. Am I pronouncing it right? Vaisakhi right. or yeah. Vesaki, Yes. All right. Vesaki celebration. What is the celebration all about? What are you celebrating? Right. So Vesaki is the day that the Khalsa, which we refer to ourselves as Khalsa, mm -hmm. consisting of the Sings and the Khors. That was the day it came about, the day it was created. So you can say like an initiation ceremony or like a baptism. That was the day that we were made Khalsa, we were made Sikh. So that was the day we were given an identity. And along with the identity came things like keeping our hair and looking different. Mm. That's why you'll see all the children, they have long hair mm. and the boys tie their hair up and they have it covered. Mm -hmm. And this is also things like people have all these questions like, oh, why do you have to keep your hair? Some of our kids even tend to get bullied in schools because people don't have that awareness of mm -hmm. this is who we are and we're created with an identity so that we can be out like spot out from the crowd mm -hmm. because we're we're the people protectors that's mm -hmm. what we're known as the Khalsa is an army mm -hmm. that's what Khalsa means it means army an army yeah mm -hmm. so we're there for protection purposes and therefore we look different we stand out mm. i love that so even the boys have to have the long hair. They must grow their hair. Yeah, so it's it. part of the culture. Yes, correct. And so it, the, the, this is why you will find some of our boys, they look like girls, they have very long hair, yeah. beautiful long hair. But uh, according to our culture and religion, we don't cut our hair. And according to the culture and religion, we're supposed to have five Ks that we're supposed to keep on our body uh, that I'll get Green Core to tell us about. Can so, you tell us about right. that? Mm. So uh -huh. on Vesakhi, which is, as I said, the initiation ceremony, you're blessed with something called Amrit. And it's basically like... A nectar. Nectar, mm. which you're blessed with. But with that comes the five Ks, mm -hmm. which were mentioned. So those five Ks, they all start with a letter K and they're five elements on your body. Mm -hmm. So first you have, we call it your case. So K-E-S, which is your hair. Mm -hmm. That's your uncut hair, unshorn hair. So that's why we don't cut our hair. Mm -hmm. And then the second is a kanga. So it's a little wooden comb that you keep within your hair. And you keep it there to neutralize the energies because all hair holds energy. Mm. So that's why you have wood because it balances protons and neutrons. And we keep that in our hair. So that's two of the five. Then the third one is a bangle that we have on our arm. Mm. And that's a kara. So the third K is mm. a kara. Oh, both of you have the bangle. We both do. have yes. a bangle. Yeah, but yeah. They're, they're different. They come no. in different sizes, yes, okay. but a kara is, yes. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so all Sikh children, all Sikhs around the world, they all wear a kara, and that's one form of identification. You'll just see it. It's the first thing on the arm. Mm. And what it teaches us is always to give, because as you receive, your kara drops fall, you, backwards, and that means you're receiving. When you give, it drops forward which is a sign of like dominance. It's coming forward, it's coming in front of you, mm -hmm. as in now I'm helping someone instead of someone helping me. Mm -hmm. The only person who helps us is God at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So that's our third one. And then we have a fourth one, which is a kirpan. It's, some people know it as a ceremonial sword, and we keep it on ourselves at all times. Oh, yeah. do you have it right now? I am, yes. Can I'm I see it? Sure. 
Ooh, all right. Yeah. So this is a kerpon. Oh. Yeah. So it, is it a weapon? Um. <laughs> People well, if you're using it for self-defense, it can be. Yeah. Because that's what Sikhs and Kalasingas do. Oh. We're supposed to be not only defending ourselves, but defending the community and the country. Okay. And so because it's a, 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 for, a, a, for purposes of religious purposes, mm. we keep this kar karpan with ourselves under our clothes. At Many times, of, uh, of our citizens times. at all times do they have problems and they go into offices because they're yeah, asked times and again ask you when you're going inside a mall exactly. you need to be yes checked. so the thing is um you know once you get known and you're you it's understood that you are a peaceful person they let you move on with it mm. um but uh like the karpan even some um people find it difficult to ride a motorbike with a turban because it's it's not uh, legal at the moment mm. but one of the things that would be good is to legalize the wearing of the turban as a, as a, equal to the helmet because around the world even in england and australia they have allowed the turban to be worn instead of a helmet and it's more safer so these are the th the few challenges we as Sikhs are struggling with, but it is part of our culture, mm -hmm. and we intend to keep it, mm -hmm. and we can intend to keep it alive. So you've just seen the karpan. Yeah, yeah. it's called a karpan. 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 Yes. K i r p a n. Mm -hmm. Okay. Karpan, and I can even break it further. So like karpan, kirpa is like a blessing, and then on is like to do a favor. So mm -hmm. if an enemy is to attack me, if somebody is now to come and harm me in a certain way it would be a blessing on myself that I have the ability to protect myself, especially as a female, because mm. that's something we all struggle with. Mm -hmm. So we do encourage our st uh, um, children, our students to learn self-defense, but more importantly, in our religion, we're actually equipped and we have the right to use it in terms of self-defense. Okay. The only time it becomes a problem is due to the lack of awareness. Like personally, I've come from England and over there, everybody's well aware of it. Mm. So as mentioned, we can roam around in our turban in, in place of a helmet and we can wear our kirpan everywhere we legally they can't ask us to take it off so when i come here and someone's like oh if you have to go to this mall or this you have to take it off i find that offensive mm. because this is my religion it's, it's what i'm blessed with culture. yeah exactly so wow. that gap in like lack of awareness basically mm -hmm. the more awareness is created the more people will know like legally i'm allowed to have it on in in England and I don't see why it shouldn't be the same here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I get you on that so do the kids also have the kirpan only the ones who have been initiated so on the day of Vesakhi the ones who have been blessed with the Amrit that I was talking about mm -hmm. when you're blessed with the Amrit you're given a kirpan as well mm -hmm. but obviously they'll when are you blessed with, the, with, the, with it okay so that's a personal decision okay um, whenever you feel like it's your time or if say if your parents are blessed and then they feel like oh now my child is of the right age to be blessed as well yeah and then obviously they'll judge by your age so if you're too young you mm. probably won't have to have one like mm -hmm. they they'll probably give you one made of wood or like something just to get you used to so that when you're old enough you mm -hmm. can actually have so from maybe what age can one be blessed so that they can be able to walk around with it um, I think that just depends on the individual themselves okay. and also the family. Okay. But then you could say like double digits onwards, 10 and above. Mm -hmm. Before that, they'll probably give you like a wooden one, especially if you're still in school environments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does the attire mean anything? Because I also see them with all white. Yes, and well, that is our uniform. Okay. We're wearing white uh, tops and uh, white pants and, and orange. We call this in Punjabi, this is a chunni or a dupatta. Mm. Um, uh, some people have that as uh, uh, blue, uh, blue and white, but because that's our uniform and this is our cultural dress. Mm. So this is how we uh, normally dress. And you can see the boys are wearing turbans. Some are wearing turbans. There's one of them who can't wear a turban or he hasn't been initiated to wear a turban. Mm. So he's covered his head, head in what you call a patka. And that is like a cloth which is covering his hair properly and keeping it intact. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh wow, I'm learning. Yeah. I hope so we you don't, as you can see, we're not well. wearing saris. Yeah. We're wearing uh, salwar kameez yeah. because this is our traditional. So you attack. don't wear saris? Because we are not Hindus. Hindus. We are Sikhs. Okay. There's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's just you have a long top and 
whether trousers. they're straight trousers or flary trousers, it doesn't matter. But the long top is for modesty. So you have up until your knees covered. And you'll see it's the same for the boys as well. As they stand, you'll see that even their tops are long mm. because we're equal in that sense. So mm. if, they have, if we have to be covered to a certain extent, they have to as well. It's just all about modesty. Oh, wow. I'm loving it. We <laughs> missed I'm one K uh, we, out of the five Ks, the Kashera. The Kashera. So that's our fifth K. So we've been through the three, mm -hmm. the Ks, the Kanga, the Kurpa, Kara, uh -huh. the Kurpan, which mm -hmm. you will remember, and then the <laughs> Kashera. Yeah. yeah. The Kashera is our, is our, uh, it's our undergarment, our mm. undershorts, like, mm. um, but especially made, especially designed uh, for, for us to be wearing uh, once we are initiated. Yeah. yeah, so when you're initiated, you get blessed with one as well. Mm -hmm. And then you wear that under your clothes as an undershort. And that just, that's there for the aspect of lust. So that's an undergarment. Yeah, it's, it's an undergarment. Oh. It's not one for display. Okay. Yeah, um, oh. but you get that as you're initiated. And that's just to teach you good morals and good values as in to not be tempted by lust and not um, engage in the wrong actions when it's not your time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, how do you commemorate the, the Vaisakhi? It, it's a what you said it's Vasaki. three days yes three prayer, days three days yeah, three so days prayers so how do you commemorate it like for example this morning we uh, the prayers were inaugurated you call them uh, inauguration today was the first day uh, today was the first day because we're, today is 11th 12th and 13th we're ce celebrating it over three days let's put mm -hmm. it this way there's some prayers that mm -hmm. we hold over three days where mm -hmm. our holy grail which is called the Guru Granth Sahib is read from back to cover uh, by uh, our spiritual teachers or those who can read them, who are initiated and can read them. They read it over a period 24 seven for three days. Mm -hmm. So like if we started this morning, now they will com be completed on uh, this Sunday at 7 a.m. in the morning. Mm -hmm. So usually it's commemorated over three days. And then we have one very special occasion, which is the flag hoisting ceremony. Uh, in every Sikh temple, you will see there's a flag hoisted, an orange flag outside, which is another significant um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, symbol. And n uh, not only symbol, it's actually uh, uh, how you can recognize that there is a Sikh temple around in the area is our special flag. Mm -hmm. So we have flag hoisting ceremony, which is then not re brought down for a whole year. Mm -hmm. It stays up there for the whole year. When they bring down the flag, which, because it's quite high, yeah. they wash it and then they cover it with special um, cotton orange cloth um, and then they dry, they, they hoist the flag up again. And this happens in each and every ta a Sikh temple around the world. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we commemorate that as a very special occasion as well, the flag hoisting ceremony. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's someone, one of my directors is wondering why we didn't get a holiday for, for this. Well, you know, can I, love I, holidays? So no, they're no, like, no, oh, no. there's something Actually, else happening. How come we don't have a holiday? The, the <laughs> good part of having a holiday, mm. the positive part is that some citizens get motivated on a holiday. In fact, I believe any uh, uh, spiritual or uh, religious occasion like this, for example, even Diwali, should be commemorated with a holiday because it gives us an opportunity to mingle with our with our African brothers and sisters mm -hmm. who we work with constantly. If we work with them every day, why can't we have just one day? Some people might say, okay, you're going off to have a good time or sleeping at home. But there's a large part of our country that spends holidays praying. Um, just to give you an indication, I Africa, Kenya has 22 uh, Sikh temples, which mm. is the largest amount of Sikh temples um, uh, compared to any country in Africa. We have oh. got the highest number. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine that we have a lot of people who are worshipping. Um, so, and you know, Indians employ uh, a lot of people. So it, it's, it's a day when they should spend ref in reflection and, and even uh, perhaps integrate within the community and explain to them why, it, what our re religion stands for mm -hmm. and what we do and how we can explain to one another, how we can benefit from one another. Okay. Cultural integration. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes, so we should have it.
maybe so that is something that should be looked into and certainly it should be looked uh, into because yeah. i know i had a petition which was working on having um uh diwali as a holiday um declared as a holiday but uh, these are all things in in uh, in uh, in progress okay. and um i i hope that the president will be able to gazette vasaki as a uh, as a holiday as well all i right. don't see why not because mm -hmm. research backs the fact that when citizens spend extra days um, relaxing, they're actually more happier. Mm -hmm. they're definitely happier. Yes. <laughs> after a public holiday. Anyway, as we come to a close of this interview, I don't want us to finish without you telling us maybe some of the cuisines that um, you you get to indulge in. Well, first of all, it's totally vegetarian. Okay. Could you tell us something about the, so the you cuisines? Don't think in no meat, no meat at in all. No. When you're initiated, mm. so as we speak about Amrit, mm. you're not allowed to eat meat or drink alcohol. So those are things we refrain from. Mm. So if you come to a temple where we do serve free food known as langar, mm. so going back to the flag that we hoist, it's called a Nishan Saib. And that's basically, it symbolizes three things, which we call deg, teg, fateh. So deg meaning like food. So mm. if somebody sees the flag from a distance, you know that's a Sikh temple where you're going to get food, shelter, and someone's going to help you out, for sure. Okay. So in our free food, and our langar, it's strictly vegetarian. So there's no meat served. And it will be like lentils and greens. Um, Potted cheese, mm. paneer. What's uh, uh, Chapati. OK. Yes. Chapuna, see, kama chapuza kenyeji. Is it roti? Uh, yes, ni roti okay. si unajua roti. Najua roti. Bas, <laughs> roti yo, <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Lekini hiyo pia tunakulanga, uh, sazingine and Saturday tunakulanga, I hope you don't mind me switching it's into Kiswahili. It's okay, you can speak Swahili. Yes. It's our national uh, language. Saturday tuna switch kwa um, chakula kama pizza na chips kwa, kwa, kwa watoto. Lekini chakula yetu inakuanga sana sana vegetarian. Okay. Ndiyo. That's interesting. Now we need to come to a close of this interview, but we want to listen to the kids one more time before we come and wrap it up with you. Sure. Okay, wonderful. So the they are now going to be performing our national anthem. Okay. Dei Shiva. All um, right. Dei Shiva. Yeah. It is. Dei Shiva.
All right. Okay, so that is the national anthem. And Gurveen, very quickly, you want us to just explain some of the words that are in there very quickly in a minute. So what I'll do is I'll start with how they started. They said, Vaigurji ka Khalsa, Vaigurji ki Fateh. As I mentioned, Khalsa is the army mm. and Vaiguru is the name of God. So we say Vaigurji ka Khalsa, the Khalsa, uh, this army belongs to God. Mm. And therefore, Fateh means victory. So the victory will always be of God. So it's not discriminatory, it's saying that God will always win. Mm. And then what they were singing was the national anthem and it says, De Shiva Barmo Eha. So we're speaking directly to God and we're saying, grant me this boon, bless me with the ability to do Shubh Karmana De Kabhu Na Doro. Like, let me do these good actions. That's all we're asking for. So our whole national anthem is based off of us asking God to bless us with the ability to do good actions. For example, helping people. That's what we sing in our national anthem. That's the main takeaway from it, that we just ask, let me do good actions in whatever shape and form that is. All right, wonderful. I really enjoyed this interview. Thank you so much Thank for you gracing very much, our Vivian. show Thanks today. And happy Vaisakhi celebration. Thank you very much, Vivian. To everybody, all the Sikhs around the country, mm -hmm. happy Vaisakhi to you too. From East African Ramgadia Board. All right, happy Vaisakhi celebrations to each and every Sikh person out there. All right, this is where we come to a close to this particular interview, but don't you go too far. When we come back, as I have had promised earlier, we are coming back with Wanavokali. Stay tuned.